Welcome and Merry Christmas. To kick us off with a little Christmas cheer, here I want to share top 10 things that didn't stink about 2020. And disclosure, I'm getting this mostly from one of my favorite YouTube channels, The Holderness Family. Thanks, guys. The top 10 things that didn't stink about 2020. Number 10, takeout got really good and convenient and a bunch of really good restaurants now have drive through Number nine, liquor distilleries started making sanitizer. Number eight, the stock for TikTok went way up. And as of right now, the stock market is at 30 grand. Number seven, you could stream some amazing Broadway shows like the original cast of Hamilton. Amazing. Number six, Apparently, the world adopted more puppies in 2020 than ever before. Number five, traffic is down along with global air pollution. Number four, we maybe got to spend more time with family than we would have otherwise. Number three, the so-called Christmas star appeared for the first time in like 800 years. Number two, With our COVID hairdo, some of us are ready to go into witness protection if we ever need to. And finally, number one, there's no shortage of wrapping paper. Speaking of wrapping paper, do you know how much we human beings spend on average on wrapping paper? $3.2 billion. And that amounts to 4 million tons of trash. Except for my mother who has saved enough wrapping paper to last about 40 years. If you think about it, wrapping paper is wasteful, messy, a pain to open sometimes, but also beautiful and cheerful. Who doesn't get excited when they see wrapping paper? Well, for your information, if you're ever on Jeopardy, rest in peace, Alex Trebek, wrapping paper was actually invented in ancient China. Eventually, the custom of wrapping gifts in paper made it to England in the 1800s. But back then, it was a custom only for the wealthy and for royalty. Think of Downton Abbey. Then, in the year 1917, in Kansas City, Missouri, of all places, wrapping paper came to the masses. It happened, as the story goes, by accident. Two brothers ran a little paper store in Kansas City, And in the Christmas season of 1917, they were having an exceptionally good holiday season for their business. And they began to run low on most of their inventory. So they searched their storerooms for anything that they could sell. And they came across this fancy French paper that was used to line the inside of envelopes. They had ordered it by mistake, and they never sold a single sheet. Well, that Christmas, the two brothers had this crazy idea that they could convince the shoppers of Kansas City that they should buy this paper to wrap their Christmas gifts in. They sold out. The next Christmas, they designed and printed their own paper. And it sold out again, and a whole industry was born. The brothers, Joyce and Ronnie Hall. Their store, Hallmark. And now you know the rest of the story. Well, think about it. Wrapping paper isn't the gift itself, but it can have a huge impact on the gift-giving experience. We see the wrapped boxes and packages, and it creates attention. We want to know what the paper is covering. Those wrapped presents under the tree, you shake the package, you weigh it in your hands, you wonder, what could it be? How things are wrapped can be very important. You know, the core message of Christmas The core message, actually, of Christianity is a beautiful, simple message. But, unfortunately, it's sometimes been wrapped up in a way that doesn't always seem attractive or even as something you would want to always open. So many times, Christianity has been poorly wrapped, so to speak, by a lot of church people. You may have seen Christianity as wrapped in hypocrisy. Maybe you've walked away from the church because you've seen Christianity wrapped up in pride or in negative judgment of others or in divisiveness or in unkindness. 
Or maybe you've seen Christianity wrapped in a bunch of rules. I understand all those reasons for walking away from Christianity. They're valid reasons, but here's the thing. None of them have anything to do with Christianity. Not really. They might have to do with certain Christians, but that's not the same thing as Christianity. As one famous Christian writer put it, the greatest argument against Christianity is Christians. The best argument for it, on the other hand, is the Christmas story itself. But to get into that story, we'll take a look at the Gospel of Luke. Luke tells the story of Christmas that most of us know because it's the passage narrated by the greatest Christmas storyteller of all time, Linus in a Charlie Brown Christmas. Luke writes, In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. There are four gospel stories in the Bible that each tell us about the life of Jesus Christ. And of the four, Luke is the most elegant and poetic writer. But even though he's describing these miraculous events of the birth of our Lord, they're not myth or legend or fantasy or fiction. They're, they really happen in actual history. Luke continues, And Joseph too went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. So Luke is giving us history and geography. We know when this happened and where. Joseph and Mary travel south for the census, from the town of Nazareth to the town of Bethlehem, because of the order of the Roman emperor. Luke goes on. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. Now there were shepherds in that region, living in the fields and keeping the night watch over the flock. This sounds quiet and peaceful, but it was not. You see, shepherds were the outcasts of society, and these particular shepherds were not only social outcasts, but they were also religious outcasts. We know exactly who these shepherds were and where these fields were too. Notice this. Now there were shepherds in the region living in the fields and keeping the night watch over the flock. Shepherds watching over the flock by night. This was not normal. Shepherds normally brought their sheep inside some kind of enclosure at night for protection. The reason is that the flock that Luke mentions here in the Christmas story was a very specific flock. It was the flock of the Jewish temple. So these shepherds weren't just any shepherds, and they weren't watching just any sheep. They were watching the sheep that would be sold for slaughter, for worship at the temple. The lambs offered for the sins of the world. Ironically, however, their job, which was menial, feel, filthy work, disqualified them by the authorities as unfit and clean to even enter into the temple. Well, Luke then, then, tells, Luke then tells us, the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were struck with great fear. Out in the middle of nowhere, these nobodies are suddenly shown the glory of God. You see, my friend, the core message of Christianity is for everybody, starting with those in the margins, those whom you least expect. These shepherds, understandably, were terrified. The angel said to them, do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Maybe in this moment at home or wherever you are, now is the first time you've ever really truly heard that good news of great joy. In your experience, Christianity has been wrapped so badly that you never even thought of the idea that it could be good news or it could inspire great joy. For today, in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you, who is Christ and Lord. God has sent saviors throughout history to help His people. He sent people like Moses and Joshua and David to save people from helpless situations that seemed hopeless. That's what a Savior does. They get us out of situations we can't solve on our own. 
But this Savior is someone different. This Savior is Christ and Lord. Even these uneducated shepherds knew what that meant. The long-awaited figure who would change everything for everybody. Suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly hosts with the angel praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom His favor rests. Favor. What a beautiful word. God didn't send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to make us feel guilty. He didn't do this to set up any more religious rules. He sent His Son to unleash His favor. When you unwrap it, that's the core of Christianity. That's what Christmas is all about. In this moment, though, some of you might not be feeling favor. Maybe the feeling you're feeling is more like loss or doubt or grief or fear. I know how you feel. One of the fondest mem memories of Christmas I have was spending time with my youngest brother, Aaron. As some of you know, my brother Aaron tragically passed away just weeks before his fourth birthday when I was 14 years old. At Christmas, my brothers and I would read with Aaron a se series of children's books called Where's Waldo? Maybe you're familiar with these books. Where's Waldo? They're a series of picture books in which you had to find the character of Waldo on each page. Can you find him, kids? Well, for us adults, it might take us forever to find. We'd give up. But for my brother Aaron, even as a three-year-old, he knew where Waldo was on every single page, just like that. Well, like Waldo, God's favor, if you look around you, is there on every page. On some days, it's easy to find. You know those days when everybody is joyful and happy and smiling and you don't have a care in the world? On other days, Waldo might seem impossible to find. And maybe you've had a lot of those kind of days in 2020. Well, my friends, this Christmas, my prayer for you is that you find Waldo, that you find God's favor. You know, it all begins with God. God is a giver. And everything is ultimately a gift from Him. Isn't it? If you think about it, God has given us so many things. He's given us birth and life. He's given us friends and family. He's given us time and talent. He's given us everything. God is a generous giver. It's His very nature. My friends, at Christmas we celebrate that God gave us His very best. At Christmas, we celebrate that God the Father gave us His Son. He gave us His Son to share His favor. And that favor includes healing, for hurts, peace for stress and anxiety, wisdom and hope for living. As we accept the gift of His favor, we receive all those other blessings. Perhaps the most famous line in all of Scripture sums it up best. For God so loved the world, He gave His only beloved Son. And then the Son loved the world so much, He gave too. He gave His life for us on the cross, that we might have life with Him. God loves and so God gives. We believe and so we receive. You know, it's as simple as simply saying it in your heart and allowing it to begin to be reflected in your life. In the end, what did those shepherds in the Christmas story do? Well, they believe the Word of God is brought to them by the angel and they acted on it. They simply went to Bethlehem to see, and then they shared the good news with their friend. That's God's gift to us this Christmas, to be with us, to walk with us each day in a living, loving relationship in which He shares His favor. This Christmas 2020, I invite you to a couple of things. First, know that the sacrament of confession is available for you every Saturday from 9 to 11 here at the church starting this Saturday, December 26th. Whether it's been five months, five years, or 50 years, make yourself available.
who experience God's favor in the sacrament of reconciliation. Second, if you'd like to make a prayer request, just go to our website or put a prayer request in the online chat. And we'll be sure to pray for all of your requests. You're not alone. And third, you're invited to follow us online every week or in person in the church. And if you're new with us, welcome. You're welcome to join our parish family by registering here in our parish on our website. You know, I for myself, I'm not going to be able to see most of my family this Christmas because of COVID. My niece, Annalise, who is in North Carolina, is actually amazingly going to be two years old this December 28th. She's a little too young for books, but guess what she's getting? Where's Waldo? And the gift, of course, is wrapped. My friend, God has shared his favor with us. When you unwrap the beautiful story of Christmas, that's what you find. Amen.